collection of ideas that George Knapp brought out on Coast yeah. to Coast. Okay, so what, kind of what, an image for a the, kid. What's, what, okay, what but, is the point of... Oh, the point all is, these other other souls that, who, that I don't know what the point be, is. That's just the way it is. But the point, look. Well, but you oh, said they're going to be they're going to be annihilated. In other words, one of us, you know, there are three of us here. Chances are that not more than one of us is not going to have their soul be annihilated. No, it could be all three of us are going to make it. I don't know. You know, we don't know. But it ain't going to be billions. It ain't going to be everyone. It's not going to be you know, the woman, who, the homeless woman, who died on the street. I mean, now if you, believe, you know, if you're, in a sense, maybe she'll be saved, but I mean, it's not going to be a kind of conscious. Oh, we're back to the eschaton again here. Yeah, back to the eschaton. Well, I mean, uh, so you but, can strive no, for it. But you said that we are all created in the image of God. Yes, but there, but a lot well, of file. But okay, look, it's what? like, just listen. What? When you a holographic image is a piece of the hologram, it is it is a compressed file. In your computer, many files get corrupted. That's evil. We corrupt files, computational errors. And in fact, if you read uh, uh, John Walker's website, uh, Formula Lab, he talks about well, <laughs> wonder, computational I, errors. Well, now, Jack, wait a minute. When <laughs> I computer. last checked the files on my computer, yeah. they had self correcting errors. Well, codes. sometimes, yeah, but a lot, but yes, but some, uh, well. yeah, then there were viruses and all that kind of stuff. You can make a computer analogy. And uh, a lot of files are, are, are corrupt. And also, we're coarse grained. See, we don't have the resolution of God. I'm not clear on where you're headed here, Dan. Yeah, um, where you're headed, I'm, Dan. Yeah. You're trying to see everybody you, could be saved. We should, we should pick it up here. We, just, we, yeah. should, he we should move a little faster yeah. and, and get into the direction that we need to get into. Okay, do you believe all six billion people on this earth, including murderers and everybody, which, of course, Christians, I guess, believe, yeah. do you think Jesus is going to save everybody? That's what you believe. Everybody's gonna. Everybody's gonna be. Can saved. virtually, it could, could. It's possible, it's possible. So in other words, you're, you don't believe there's any real absolute evil because in that case, I mean, should then the issue is should. And now I'm not doing physics anymore. Now I'm doing theology. Okay, uh, so the issue is should Hitler be saved? Let's say. Well, uh, I stop? believe that that God did not create corrupt souls. And I also All right, but this believe is a belief not that, based on any evidence. The evidence that, to me, the, evi uh, the evidence is, uh, says the opposite. Well, there are plenty well, of then you're souls. saying that, that that this Omega future thing is is you know is is um, a faulty. Of know, course, it's faulty. faulty. It's yes, it's a natural phenomenon that it seems to have supernatural well, powers. Of course, well, of course, it has errors just like any. It's subject well. to the laws of nature. Yeah, it's not per. It's okay. This valus, this vast active living intelligence living on this on this future cosmic horizon, it's a holographic quantum computer. You know, it makes it has it has glitches in it too. Well, it's possible that it's possible it's not that perfect, we're going to discuss the, if we're going to get into things as, as lofty as the, uh, discussing the mind of God. Yeah. Right. You know, the brain and the mind of God. Yeah. Well, it is conceivable that God is slightly psychotic. Yeah, he's even slightly psychotic. Occasionally psychotic. Yeah, which explains why so many of us are. <laughs> we're in his image. This doesn't mean that's a good God. It's supreme. Okay, there's nothing in physics that would suggest that this cosmic intelligence of the intelligence is, it's not, it may not be supreme, it's not omnipotent, it's not omniscient, and it not, need not be morally good. It may have moral, you know, it, it's a complex phenomenon. It's the most complex phenomenon there is. So it has many dimensions to it. And that also explains the origin of evil. It's all there. You know all this stuff, all, all this stuff that you believe that you know the, the, the naive theology that God is omniscient and um, and and morally good. I mean that's just uh, that's wish fulfillment. That's uh, childhood wishful thinking. That none of the evidence, as I look, none of the evidence supports that. And it's not a perfect universe. It's not a perfect universe. Nothing's perfection. We could strive to it. There are there are, there are wonderful things. Part, part the, it's a rich, broad spectrum. I mean, I, I will admit, I think that, you know, of, of, of the many great avatars that have appeared on Earth, Jesus Christ was one yeah. of the greatest and that yeah. his message was a good but, message. Yeah, but, and Buddha, sure. Uh, but he wasn't perfect either, as is, right. as is evident by what happened in the New Testament. Yeah. So, you know, everybody, is, everyone is fallible. Even God is fallible. He's, he's smarter, he's more powerful than us, or it, or her, or <laughs> whatever. But you can't, you know, any any of your moral assumptions, those are just, you know, based on 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 the thinking of uh, of shepherds uh, thousands of years ago, you know, who didn't know physics. 
Oh, mathematics. Yeah, we've, we've come a long way since then, as like in the women's movement, Virginia. we come a long way. So I'm not wedded to any past uh, prejudices. You know, as, as Einstein said, the common sense is just the prejudice you got since before you reached the age of 18. This is all uh, what uh, Stephen Weinberg would call accidents, and the Murray Gell man would call accidents of history, frozen in accidents of history, kind of frozen in randomness. You know, it's just chance. Or maybe with a little bit, maybe with a little bit of guidance from the future, perhaps. But you know, the control is not perfect, and that I think that answers all the questions. I mean, it, it to me, it's a plausible solution that's consistent with science, consistent with and it's consistent with what we see, the obvious things we see around us. We do not live in a perfect world. In fact, the world seems to be getting less and less perfect in many ways. Right? We're getting more and more out of control. We're spinning out of control. With ecological catastrophe is looming, financial meltdowns from people's greed, it lo looks pretty bad. So to think everybody's going to be saved is going to be a happy ending, I think, well, think that if you want, but it doesn't look that way to me, and I hope I'm wrong. So, Dan, I'm sorry. What are you... Uh, am I depressing you? <laughs> are you good to... Are you... Um, um, all right. We have, let's say, let's say we do have a mathematical universe and that it is self-consistent. Now, with that self-consistency, I don't quite see where, where the um, opportunity for error is... Um, is obvious or automatic in that. I mean, my understanding... Yeah, no, it's quantum of, randomness. That's, that's the irreducible quantum noise. Wait a minute. It's driven, it's noise driven. You're, you're telling me... And different, you, different scales. It's on when different I scales. last checked on Jack Sarfati's physics yeah. background, I understood that he was a Bohmian. Yes. So? Now is... is uh, uh, my understanding of, of Bohm's theory is is that it's uh, deterministic. No, but the deterministic does not mean it's not random. Everything Bohm does, <coughs> the, the initial conditions are random. There's both. The boundary conditions are random boundary conditions. The laws of evolution are deterministic. Wait a minute. But, I just You just told me now that the uh, initial conditions was a, was a single bit. I'm not, you're, I'm talking about cosmology. I'm, Bohm was not talking about cosmology. He was talking about little well, experiments with gases and stuff we do in the laboratory, little small pieces. When you look at, at small pieces of the universe, the rules are not quite the same as looking at the entire universe. The difference of scale, the 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 the, the laws of physics are scale dependent. You know, it's, it depends on the resolution of your of your of your detectors. So if the, the the rule says is what I call emergent order. Yeah, as, as P.W. Anderson says, more is different. Emerging levels of complexity on different scales. And cosmology has to do with the largest scale of things. Things are different on a smaller scale. And there's nothing in Bohm's... Bohm's physics is consistent with uh, quantum mechanics, ordinary quantum mechanics, which has irreducible quantum randomness on the micro scale. And there's plenty of room for random errors uh, creeping all the time. And there's noise. Quantum noise is random noise. In, in Bohm's physics, he didn't, but Bohm never. Bohm didn't know about dark energy. He didn't, but there's no Bohmian mm -hmm. quantum mechanics combined with general relativity, except very recently, a guy named Shelley Glashow. I mean, she, she, Shelley Goldstein has. You know, the, the, they're beginning to do that. But that's that. Bohm never had gravity in his theories. That was done in '52. He was just talking about atomic physics. They were trying to explain scattering, like the, you know the calculations he did uh, in Princeton. It was that kind of thing. He never. He didn't have. Uh, you know. So there's, there's nothing about perfection and, and <coughs> deterministic doesn't mean not, not, not random. In fact, you know, everything, uh, when you look at Valentini's papers, the Bohmian approximation is what's called subquantal thermal equilibrium. It's totally random. At, at the substrate is a totally random substrate. But the way the probability distributions are deterministic. But the individual events, okay, the probability, the Schrodinger equation, the probability patterns are deterministically evolving in time, what's called the unitary time evolution. But the individual events, the, 
the collapses of the wave function you want to think in Bohr's, those are totally random and indeterministic. So you have